Adam's Film Reviews, Unhinged 2020. Courtesy tap is, young man? Sounds like this. It's light. It's friendly. I'm sure that's what your mom meant to do. No, it's not. Mom! Having a kind of a hard time lately. I'm sorry. You accept my apology? Just ignore him. Well, if you could just do the same, we could press reset. I don't have anything to apologize for. Can you go, please? Ma'am, are you okay? I'm pretty sure the guy in that truck's following me. He's road raging. Why don't you just chill, man? Go your own way. Marking my first foray back into the cinema since March, Unhinged is a new release for this year that managed to get an international release way before being released in the States. So, yay COVID. Written by Carl Ellsworth and directed by Derek Borte, Unhinged is a thriller come car chase that stars Russell Crowe doing his best John Goodman impression and Karen Pistorius as a young mother justifiably freaking out in every other shot. The story opens on Rachel Hunter, played by Karen Pistorius, having what most people would call a really bad day. For Rachel though, it just seems like another day of the week. First she wakes up late, then she's reminded by her teenage son Kyle, played by Gabriel Bateman, that not only does she have a hair appointment with an extremely important client, but if she doesn't get going soon, he'll be late for school with an automatic detention. As Rachel rushes to get ready, we learn that she's recently been through a divorce, and that she now lives with her dead-eyed layabout brother Fred, played by Austin McKenzie, and his equally dead-eyed girlfriend while Rachel and Fred's mother has been taken into care. Things are going... poorly. With Carl bemoaning his automatic detention he'll get for being late, Rachel rushes the pair onto the highway to try and get Carl to school on time. Her client, meanwhile, not happy with being fobbed off with a late Rachel again, calls to fire her. So you can add being unemployed to Rachel's ever-growing list of miseries. Visibly irritated and frustrated, Rachel is fuming to find in front of her a large car at the traffic lights not moving despite the light turning green. Without a second thought, Rachel pounds the car horn and overtakes the 4x4. As she turns the corner, however, she finds that the car has followed her, pulling alongside her car as the bearded man inside, played by Russell Crowe, signals for Carl to wind down his window. With a softly spoken southern drool, the likes of which should be enough to make your skin crawl. The man, who is not trying to hide the blood on his shirt incidentally, apologises for zoning out at the traffic lights, but urges Rachel to apologise for her rude interactions with him. Rachel refuses. The man goes on to promise that he's going to show Rachel what a bad day really looks like. In a move that feels extremely sudden and jarring, Rachel's life turns upside down the moment she drops Kyle off at school. Stopping at a petrol station, she returns in horror to find that her mobile phone has been stolen and that the man himself is sat glaring behind the wheel of his car, right behind her. I've said before that the 1993 film Falling Down has always creeped me out, mostly for feeling a little bit too real. In many ways, Unhinged feels like Crow's angry wasp of a character is having his very own Falling Down day, into which Rachel blunders headfirst and redirects his whole plan to revolve around an upset frustrated single mother and ruin her life forever. Attending appointments in Rachel's calendar, visiting her family home and demanding that Rachel name his next victims from her contact list, the unnamed man engages Rachel in a game of murderous chess, with the real highlight of the film being the unending paths of logic and racing around that both Rachel and the man do to stay on top of the situation. An endless what would I do now? A scenario that is surprisingly effective at ramming the suspense and thrills home. But that's not to say this isn't a somewhat predictable film. Clunky expositional dialogue scattered throughout do too good a job at showing what's going to happen next. Borte's direction does a great job at keeping the pacing at a satisfyingly intense level, while Karen Pistorius' terror and bewilderment almost tops 
Crow's far too real horror. On the whole, not sure it's up to the task of convincing people to go back to the cinemas, but it's definitely a solid thriller well worth your time.